All right, part three of the Scrum with GitHub project series. In the last video, I showed you how to create a project. In this video, we'll start using the requirements management features of that new project. So in this part of the demo, I'm gonna start showing you how to populate your project's product backlog with actual product backlog items, requirements. And while we're doing this, I'll show you how to prioritize your work. This video will be the basic mechanics of using the backlog features. I'll get into the details of product backlog refinement and how to keep your requirements backlog up to date in a later video. As a reminder of how the product backlog fits into the overall Scrum process, here's the Scrum framework diagram. The product backlog is this first box right here. It's the list of all the things you might ever do as part of your project. Thinking about the essential activities that we're trying to map into GitHub projects. We're trying to get our list of prioritized requirements. In Scrum, this is presented by the product backlog. It's the product owner's vision for which features should be delivered and all the features that are being considered for future delivery. The items toward the top of the product backlog are the highest priority and the items toward the bottom are the lower priority items. Okay, so here we are on GitHub in a web browser and we've got the project open that we created last time. Currently the view is set to backlog. I'd probably actually call this a Kanban board view though. But this screen here, what it's doing is it gives us an overview of the requirements that are in our backlog. Now, when I think about a typical backlog view, I'd probably be thinking about a list of items. To get to that more traditional backlog view, we can come over here to this little drop-down menu on the backlog tab. Clicking this brings up a context menu with a bunch of options for how we see this stuff in our backlog. I want to see this backlog data, the list of our requirements, in list form. To get that, you can change the layout to table. So there's a helpful keyboard shortcut that'll help you with adding new items, and that one is control space. But you can also just click the plus button to create a new item. But I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut, control space. This puts us into edit mode, and now we can type in the title for our first requirement. I'm gonna call it product backlog item A. And when I'm done, I'm gonna press enter. And there's the first item, product backlog item A. By the way, in Scrum, requirements on the product backlog are typically called product backlog items or PBIs. Although it's not unusual to hear teams call them user stories or requirements, whatever you call them, the idea is that they're a piece of functionality that you might deliver as part of the product that you're working on. Since I'm already in edit mode to create another PBI, I can just start typing. I'll create another one called product backlog item B and another, PBIC, and then two more, PBID and PBIE. So five requirements, five product backlog items. Your product backlog in real life will probably be a lot more than just five items, but this is enough for now to start showing you some more stuff that you can do. If you want to assign work to someone, you can come over to the assignees column and click on the drop down item link. This brings up a context menu that lets you search for people who are part of your organization. The two suggestions that come up are for me and my friend Mickey Gousset. And by the way, if you haven't checked out Mickey's YouTube channel, you probably should. He works for GitHub and he has a whole lot of great GitHub content up on YouTube. So that's the assigning work stuff. So how you assign stuff to people. The next column is for editing the status for requirements. The default status values are to do, in progress, and done. To do means that the work hasn't started yet. In progress means that it's being worked on, and done means that the work has happened and completed. Now I'm guessing that a lot of you are looking at those status values and thinking, hey, that's not enough, I need more on my team. Yeah, well, don't worry about it. I'll show you how to add some more later on, but for right now, to do, in progress, and done. So next up is priority, and in my mind, these values are more like categories of prioritization, probably representing something like, how important are these items to the business? Now these values are probably not how I would actually handle relative priority, you know, of one PBI versus another PBI, mostly because I think that these values aren't granular enough. I'll show you how to do prioritization of PBIs in just a moment. Next is the size column. These values are meant to be the rough size estimate, rough level of effort for your product backlog items. By default, this uses t-shirt size values, extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. And then the last column is iteration. Iteration is a scheduling value. The intent is to say when a PBI is getting worked on. In Scrum, this means which sprint the work is scheduled for. 
I typically only set this value when I know for a fact that the work is getting done. Usually that'd be in the sprint planning meeting. I'll cover the sprint planning meeting in the next video. Okay, so we have five PBIs on our backlog, but so far we only have the titles. In the next demo, I'll show you how to start populating the details of these PBIs. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.